In this tutorial, you will learn how to use the Pythagorean theorem to help you determine if a triangle is in fact a right triangle. Or, you'll use the Pythagorean theorem to help you find the missing side length if you are given something you already know is a right triangle. So by the end of this video, you should be able to say that you can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine if a triangle is a right triangle or find the missing length of one side if given the measurements of two sides of a right triangle. So this is Pythagoras, and this was his big idea. A theorem is a fancy word for an idea that cannot be proven wrong. So Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher born in 569 BC, and he was often referred to as the first pure mathematician. And he studied the relationships of the lengths and sides of right triangles, and he found something very interesting. First, let's talk about the words that he uses to describe a right triangle. This longest side here is not called a hypopotenuse. <laughs> it's called the hypotenuse. And these two sides over here are called the legs. So the legs are what make the right angle. The two legs always touch the right angle. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. No matter which way your triangle is facing, wherever the right angle is, the hypotenuse will be diagonally away from it. And the legs will always be touching it. So the hardest part about using the Pythagorean theorem is determining whether you're looking at a leg or a hypotenuse. So pause the video and see if you can identify whether the X represents a leg or a hypotenuse. All right, let's take a look and see how you did. Okay, remember the hypotenuse is always the longest side across from the 90 degree angle and the legs always touch or create the 90 degree angle. When using the Pythagorean theorem, you need to successfully be able to identify which two sides are the legs. We generally call them A and B, and it doesn't matter which one you put first or which one you put second. But the hypotenuse is always the side called C. Sometimes you will be given a drawing that looks like a right triangle, but does not in fact have the 90 degree right triangle box. And sometimes you'll just be given three random numbers and asked to determine if they would create a right triangle if drawn. The Pythagorean theorem can help you decide if something would in fact be a right triangle. First, you have to be able to identify who the legs and the hypotenuse are. And we generally use these variable letters to represent those sides. So if we were looking at this triangle that's labeled three, four, and five, with the longest side always being the hypotenuse, then let's determine if this is in fact 90 degrees. So in order to do that, we need to identify who our A, B, and C side lengths are. The two legs are A and B, and the hypotenuse is C. So using those numbers, we substitute them into the correct variable positions. We square each of the numbers, and then we add the numbers on the left-hand side. If they do, in fact, equal each other, then this is a right triangle. Let's try another one. Label the three sides, two legs and a hypotenuse, and substitute them into the formula. Compute the squares using a calculator if you need to, and then check to see if they're equal. If they're not equal, then this is not a right triangle. One last time. Identify your three sides, substitute them into the correct variables, square each of the values, and simplify. If the left and right side are equal, you have a right triangle. Pause the movie now and give these three a try. Okay, let's see how you did. 
Now let's move on to the second part of the lesson. The Pythagorean theorem is a formula that can help you to determine if a triangle is right, or if you already know it's a right triangle, it can help you find the length of the third side. But you have to be given the other two. So let's take a look at this triangle here. What if we already knew it was a right triangle because they showed us using that right triangle box in the corner? How could we find the length of this missing side here? Well, first, we identify whether we know the legs or whether we know the hypotenuse. And once we identify A, B, and C, we can substitute them into the equation. In this equation, the hypotenuse is missing, so we leave it as a variable. You can either use C or X if that's what's indicated in the drawing. Compute the squares, simplify the left-hand side, and now it's time to figure out what just the letter X is, not X squared. So in order to do that, we would need to square root each side of the equation, because a square root is the inverse of a square. And if you square root the left, you have to square root the right. So you can use a calculator to square root your math. For most students, the square root button on a calculator is typically written above the square key. So in my calculator, I'd have to press the blue button first, and then this key diagonal of the number 7. Once I have the square root sign showing on my calculator, then I can type in the number. In our problem, the number was 169. And the square root of 169 is 13. So I know that x is equal to 13. Let's try that again. Label your three sides and fill them into the formula. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. One of these positions will always be unknown. So use your calculator to compute. and then use your calculator to find the square root. The square root of 113 is a long decimal, so we're going to round to the nearest tenth, or 10.6. Pause the video and give these a try. Okay, let's see how you did. I'm going to show you a few more problems, but this time, instead of the hypotenuse being the unknown side, we're going to have a leg be one of the unknown sides. So you'll notice here that my a and b and c are 3, x, and 5. So in this problem, I know one leg and I know one hypotenuse, but the other leg is missing. So even if I were to compute all of these squares, this problem is still going to require some more work because the x squared is not alone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the x squared all alone on one side. In order to get x squared alone, I'm going to need to subtract 9 from both sides. When I do that, I finally get x squared by itself. Don't forget the last step is always to square root both sides. So the missing side length was 4. Let's try that again. Label the sides that you know, and then fill them into the formula. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this time, I don't know a, so I'm going to leave that as a variable. But b is 6, and c is 15. Don't forget the little squares. Compute these items using a calculator if you need to. And then don't forget to get your variable isolated before you square root. So we're going to subtract 36 from both sides and rewrite. I'm going to use my calculator to compute 
225 minus 36. Then I'm going to use my calculator to square root both sides. So the square root of 189 is a decimal. So I'm going to round to nearest tenths, 13.7. Pause the video and give these four a try. Okay, let's see how you did. Sometimes Pythagorean theorem problems can be stories, like this one here. A 25 foot ladder is leaning against the window of a house. The window is 14 feet high. How many feet away from the house is the ladder? So visually, you may be seeing this, but technically, this ladder and this house and the distance of that ladder are creating a right triangle. So generally, we sketch a right triangle and we fill in the information that we know. So this is the house right here. This is the ladder. And this is the distance of the ladder from the house. So the window on the house is 14 feet high. So that makes this side of the triangle 14. The ladder is 25 feet tall. So that makes this one a leg down here. Now we don't know its measure. So we're gonna fill in these values into our Pythagorean theorem. Remember the two legs are A and B. So I don't know one of the legs, but I do know the other. And the hypotenuse, which in this case is the ladder, is 25 feet. So A squared, plus 196 equals, whoops, 25 squared, 625. I'm gonna isolate my variable, and then I'm gonna square root. So 625 minus 196, is 429, and then I'm going to square root both sides to find the distance of the ladder from the house. So the square root of 429 is approximately 20.7 feet. So 20.7 feet. Let's try one more word problem. A boat leaves Boston Harbor and travels 60 miles east. It then makes a 90 degree turn and travels X miles north. An hour later, it turns around and travels 100 miles back to Boston Harbor. How many miles did the boat travel? Well, first I'm gonna label my legs and my hypotenuse. And now I can fill them into my Pythagorean theorem. 60 squared plus B or X squared, it doesn't matter which letter you use equals the hypotenuse squared. So let's see, 60 squared is 3,600, and 100 squared is 10,000. So 3,600 and 10,000. Now I need to isolate my variable x, and first I'm gonna subtract 3,600 from both sides, and then I'm going to rewrite and that's 6,400. Then I'm going to square root both sides and I'm going to get 8, 0. Let's just double check that. The square root of 6,400, 80. So it must have traveled 80, 80 miles north. Okay, that concludes our lesson on the Pythagorean Theorem.